SpaceX's exponential growth is evident. Following the successful Starship Flight 5, which marks a significant achievement, SpaceX has secured a major U.S. military contract, further establishing its lead over competitors. Although many organizations are concerned about Musk's dominance in this field, it is undeniable that SpaceX's launch services offer outstanding benefits to its customers. Despite competitors' efforts, they have not been able to keep up with SpaceX's rapid development. SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket is now considered the most reliable in the history of the space industry, becoming the lowest risk option for satellite and spacecraft missions. In addition, SpaceX stands out for its flexibility, with the ability to carry out unscheduled launches within just a few days' notice, often replacing the planned payload with their own Starlink satellites. Economically speaking, Falcon 9 leads the market with the lowest costs. SpaceX is expected to maintain this advantage in the near future, thanks to its reusable technology and large-scale operations. The Flight 5 test of Starship marked an important milestone toward the goal of fully reusable rockets, a revolutionary concept compared to the practice of discarding rockets into the atmosphere, as other space organizations do. While this is only the beginning, SpaceX's rocket development has already left the world in awe and admiration. There is no doubt that SpaceX fully deserves this valuable launch contract from the U.S. military. SpaceX secured this contract against ULA, which had completed two Vulcan rocket launches valued at 733.5 million US dollars. The mission orders average approximately 81.5 million each. Six of the nine missions will launch from Vandenberg Space Force Base, California as early as late 2025, while the remaining three will lift off from Cape Canaveral, Florida. Building on this momentum, SpaceX's recent win of a U.S. military contract further underscores its leading position in the aerospace industry. The Space Force categorized 79 missions into two competitive phases, Lane 1 and Lane 2. The orders announced on Friday were the first awarded under Phase 3 Lane 1, which are for less demanding missions to low Earth orbit. There are at least 30 Lane 1 missions that the Space Force plans to award to launch services providers by 2029, primarily to launch hundreds of small spacecraft for the Pentagon's Space Development Agency, or SDA. The SDA is deploying a constellation of satellites designed to detect and track enemy missiles and relay missile warning data to military units capable of neutralizing threats. These missions require medium lift or smaller rockets, but must be able to handle a high launch cadence, comparable to the capabilities of larger rockets. In June, the U.S. Space Force selected three companies, SpaceX, ULA, and Blue Origin, which is Jeff Bezos' company, to compete for launch orders in the Lane 1 category. The Space Force will expand the list of Lane 1 launch providers as more companies complete their rocket development. Potential companies include Rocket Lab, Firefly Aerospace, Relativity Space, Stoke Space, and others. Although Blue Origin is already on the Space Force's list of available launch providers, the company's new Glenn rocket was not eligible for the contracts announced on Friday. The reason is that the military requires a rocket to have completed at least one successful orbital launch to qualify for Lane 1 orders. New Glenn's first test flight is scheduled for the end of this year. Thus, for this year, only SpaceX's Falcon 9 and ULA's Vulcan rockets are qualified to compete for these launch orders. The competition between the two rivals was fierce, and SpaceX emerged victorious, securing all nine Lane 1 missions open for competition. Meanwhile, Lane 2 of the Space Force's National Security Space Launch Program, or NSSL, involves more complex military missions, often involving larger, more expensive payloads to higher orbits. The Space Force is expecting to select providers for Lane 2 missions soon which will require more stringent rocket certifications than in Lane 1, where the military accepts a certain level of risk. Currently, SpaceX's Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy are certified for national defense missions, and the Space Force is in the process of certifying ULA's Vulcan rocket after two successful test flights. However, to be realistic, Blue Origin faces a challenge in meeting its deadlines. The New Glenn rocket, which Blue Origin executives have firmly stated will have its first launch in early December, experienced a significant upper stage explosion in late August. This incident may result in schedule changes for New Glenn, as its critical Mars mission escapade in October has already been pushed to early 2025.
Therefore, Blue Origin might be better off withdrawing from the military's launch award program if they want to avoid further embarrassment, especially considering their continuous losses to SpaceX, their arch rival. Not only is Blue Origin losing, but New Glenn is also seen as outdated compared to SpaceX's new Starship program. The victory of this contract came just days after SpaceX successfully launched and caught Starship, a major achievement demonstrating SpaceX's global leadership in the space industry. To truly understand SpaceX's impact, we must look at the International Astronautical Congress, or IAC, held on October 14th this year. The biggest news of this week-long conference wasn't what happened inside the vast convention center, but rather an event more than 9,000 kilometers away, the Starship flight in Texas. While SpaceX remained relatively quiet at IAC, with no exhibit booths or major presentations, the flight was a hot topic of discussion among attendees, highlighting SpaceX's capabilities and, for some, the growing gap between them and the rest of the industry. For NASA, this flight signaled that the development of the Starship HLS version is on track for Artemis III, which is officially set to take place no later than September of 2026. NASA Administrator Bill Nelson said during an October 14th plenary session that featured the heads of several space agencies, just yesterday, SpaceX had a very successful fifth launch as they develop this very large rocket. This was another one of the steps in the iteration of developing that. He added at a press conference the next day that work on the HLS version of Starship was on schedule. I think you saw as a result of Sunday's test of SpaceX and its big rocket that they are moving along very well and that will ultimately determine the timing for the landing of Artemis 3 on the moon, he said. As of Sunday's test, it was right on the mark. They are right on making the benchmarks as they are planning to land in late 26, he said of SpaceX later in the briefing. The success of the flight was also welcomed by companies that plan to use Starship for other missions, from launching large payloads like commercial space stations into low Earth orbit to commercial missions to the moon. For others in industry and government, though, the latest Starship test flight prompted different reactions, particularly among European companies and agencies as the continent emerges from a launcher crisis, with the successful inaugural launch of Ariane 6 in July and the return to flight of Vega C in early December. Congratulations to SpaceX, what an incredible feat of engineering. Mars, here we come. Rocket Factory Augsburg stated in a social media post on October 14th. At the same time, the coin has a second side. It shows and confirms that Europe has completely lost touch. Can it still catch up? No chance. At least, not the way things are going at the moment. The company, whose first RFA-1 launch vehicle was lost in a static fire test accident in August, called for governments in Europe to serve as anchor customers for new launch vehicles, increased investment, and a framework that allows and promotes unbureaucratic fast and risk-taking development. In an October 15th interview, Joseph Oshbacher, Director General of the European Space Agency, otherwise known as ESA, said he was fascinated by the launch from an engineering perspective. I then have to think, what does it mean for Europe and to see what would be the change in the landscape and the ecosystem and what do we need to do? Europe, he acknowledged, cannot compete head-to-head -head with Starship but could instead take advantage of broader changes in the space economy enabled by Starship. How do we position ourselves in this ecosystem that is developing now, he said. You can imagine that if Starship brings 100 tons into space frequently, this will change everything out there in space, how things are constructed and how space is being utilized. He said it was interesting that RFA was criticizing Europe for falling further behind in launch, noting that Europe was taking steps to make the launch industry more competitive, while supporting emerging markets like commercial cargo transportation. We are on the right track. We are going full speed in this direction. Starship, as well as SpaceX's reuse of Falcon 9 boosters, have made it clear to many that reusability is essential for future launch vehicles. S. Samanat, chairman of the Indian Space Agency, noted in the October 15th plenary that the Indian government recently approved the development of the Next Generation Launch Vehicle, or NGLV, that will provide increased payload performance over existing rockets and with a reusable booster. He estimated that the NGLV would take six years to develop. I think all of you realize that reusability is mandatory for launchers, he said. 
For space agencies and companies worldwide, this shift could redefine the way rockets are designed, operated, and utilized, marking a new era in space exploration and commercial ventures. As the global space landscape continues to evolve, SpaceX's innovations will not only shape its future, but also influence the trajectories of other companies and agencies. With a remarkable track record, ongoing advancements, and newfound military contracts, SpaceX is poised to redefine the aerospace industry for years to come. That's all for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and see you next time.